Hello guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Here is my TBR for the month of January. If you guys saw my TBR video, these are the books that were picked. If you have not watched it, it was a fun video, so definitely check that out. But these are all of the books that were on there, except for one I already read and one's on my Kindle, so you do not see those here. But I thought for today's video, I've actually done this before, I believe. I don't think I did it last year. Was it the year before that? Has it been two years since I've done this kind of video? That's crazy. I'm gonna look up all of these books on my TBR on Goodreads, see their ratings, and we're gonna read the highest rated book and the lowest rated book. I was gonna do this with my whole entire physical TBR, but I really wanna try to stick to the TBRs that I'm picking each month and try to get through these books to get to the other books on my physical TBR. Maybe sometime this year we can do one that's all of the books on my TBR. I'm kind of interested to see what the lowest rated book on my physical TBR is and the highest rated out of all of the books on there because I know there's a lot. So maybe if you guys like this video, let me know if you wanna see one where I read the lowest and highest rated from my actual physical TBR, not just like the smaller TBR for the month. But I love this concept because I like to see how I feel about books that are either really highly rated, if I kind of agree with it, if I think it should be highly rated in my own opinion after reading the book, or the lowest rated one, if I agree that the low rating makes sense for the book. And I like to see my opinions based off of these ratings of the book. So I'm excited to see which one on this list is the lowest and the highest. I have no idea. I haven't looked them up yet. So we're going to find out right now. Collided by Lauren Asher is a 3.84 star on Goodreads. These Hollow Vows is a 4 star on Goodreads. The game plan is a 3.47 star. Dance of Thieves is a 4.16 star. Finale is a 4.19 star. So that's really close to Dance of Thieves and also pretty highly rated. I feel like that might be the highest one. House of Salt and Sorrow is 3.92 star, which I thought this was gonna be a higher rated on Goodreads or more highly rated because I've heard like great things about this book. And I know not to compare and not to judge books by the ratings on Goodreads, but I do like to check it out before I read some books that I read just to see like on average what people are thinking about the book. But I do still just like why I'm doing this video I like to see my opinion based off that because there's some books that are rated low that I love or books that I love that people don't like you know everything is subjective in reading and everyone's opinions are different that's why I love this little not a challenge this type of video. The last one we have is a not so meet cute and that is 4.08 stars. So with all of that, I believe our highest rated is Finale by Stephanie Garber. And I think our lowest is The Game Plan by Michaela Smelter. But I'm not too surprised that this is the highest and this is the lowest. I think when you're reading a series and Finale is part of the Carnival trilogy, it's the last and final book in it. And I feel like while you're reading a series, you get kind of further into the series. You grow to connect to the characters and the world and you kind of really like fall in deeply into it. So I feel like there's a higher chance of the book being more highly rated when you're further into a series. I feel like that's what I've seen in series at least. And then we just have a good old hockey romance. This one I feel like makes sense that it's the lowest, not because I think it's a bad book, just because I feel like sports romances, I at least haven't read some that I'm like obsessed with. I feel like they're just like an average, you get a sports romance, you know, if you're in the mood for it, in the mood for the banter, and usually there's spice in it and stuff like that. Like what if you're in the mood for it, they're definitely good, but I feel like they're not the most highly rated like type of genre of book. I feel like it, you either love a hockey romance or you just don't read hockey romance. Do you know what I mean? I don't really know how to explain that, but this one is just about, I think that they help each other out. He teaches the good girl how to be bad if she agrees to pretend to be his girlfriend in front of the media. So fake dating. I do love that trope and I do love hockey romances when I'm in the mood for them. So I have recently been in the mood for hockey romances and just romances in general, honestly. So we'll see how this goes. I feel like it also depends on what you're in the mood for when you're reading, especially if you're like a mood reader. If you're not in the mood for a fantasy book or if you're not in the mood for a hockey romance, that will definitely affect your rating on the book so it really just all depends when you decide to pick up the book and read it could be right book wrong time wrong book right time is wrong book right time a thing Maybe your expectations are you didn't think you'd like it, but you've read it at the right time. Anyway, these are the books we're going to read. I feel like we have to start with the lowest rated just because the expectations for this book aren't as high as Finale. I'm very excited about this one. Like I said, I'm kind of in the mood for this genre, so we'll see how that affects my rating or if I agree with the ratings that are on there. But the cover of this though is really, really cute. So I've been wanting to read this for a while. We're going to start this. I will give updates. I'm excited to see how I feel about this one. And yeah, I'll be back with some updates. hockey 
hockey romance. I don't know why I assumed it was like NHL. And I haven't read a college, well not just college hockey, I feel like every time I think of that I think of the off-campus series, but I haven't read, I feel like a college romance in a while. Either as adult I've been reading or young adult. Like I haven't read like a school romance in a while, so kind of excited. Almost feels nostalgic reading a college campus like hockey romance because it reminds me of off campus so much and that series I read two three years ago like at the start of my reading journey again so it feels nostalgic reading a book that's kind of in a similar sense to that so we'll see if the book is similar at all. I feel like I could see this being similar to off campus in a way. Anyway I'm on page six so that's all I've gotten so far. <laughs> hours and I told myself the start of this year if I read a book and I know I'm not gonna like it I know it won't be over three stars and I don't want to force myself to read them I got 83 pages in which I think enough at least for me in a book if I'm feeling like I'm really not gonna enjoy it and I'm forcing myself to read it even if it's for a video I'm going to DNF it there are so many books on my TBR and just in general that I feel like if I'm not enjoying a book why almost waste my time with it so I think I'm going to DNF this I know I'm not gonna enjoy it I think it's just the writing style I love it. It almost reads kind of wattpad -y and I don't really enjoy the way it's written. The pacing of it was very interesting and it's just not really what I expected it to be and I'm not really enjoying it. I feel like I know I won't enjoy it so. Also he's 23 I think. She's the one in college. She's a freshman in college which what 18? 19. He's 23. He's in the NHL, which I thought starting this he was still in college, but he's in the NHL. He got injured, so he's now back with his college coach preparing to go back to the NHL. So he's 23 living on campus, and she just started college. He used to go there, I believe. I don't know. It's just a very interesting timeline and pacing and writing. And I feel like the way that the characters are like meeting, I feel like it's like a forced chemistry almost. I don't know. It just it feels really weird. I just know I'm not going to enjoy this one, and I don't want to force myself to read it. So that kind of says something for it being the lowest rated on my TBR because I think if I ended up finishing this I would give it three at most and I know I'm only 80 pages in and there's definitely chances it could get better but from what I've read and how I know myself as a reader I don't think I'm going to be enjoying this so first DNF of the year I'm really upset about it because I was so excited about this book for so long seeing it on my TBR and just like the cover and a hockey romance but it's just not hitting the right way it's just not for me so I'm gonna DNF that book I am so sorry if you guys wanted me to read it but we're just gonna move on to the next lowest rated on my TBR, which I think was either Collided or House of Salt and Sorrows. I think it's Collided by Lauren Asher. Yeah, this book had a 3.84 star on Goodreads. This is part of the Dirty Air series. This is an F1 romance series. This is the, did I just say that? This is the second one in it. I read the first one sometime last year. I didn't absolutely love it. I think I gave it three stars. It wasn't my favorite romance. I didn't really connect to the characters, but I do love Lauren Asher's writing a lot. I've heard great things about the rest of the books in this series. I don't think this is everyone's favorite. I think the last one is everyone's favorite but one of my goals this year is to finish up this series so this will definitely help me out this one's about sophie who i think she has like a bucket list and it says that she puts him in the friend zone but instead of accepting the friendship he strikes a deal one season one list I guess that he's helping her with her bucket list item. Also on an F1 team, like he is a race car driver. Sophie's part of the rival team. I think she's his boss's daughter. I don't know, that's a lot of information I just threw out that I don't even know is 100% correct. So I'm gonna start reading. I did start this book sometime last year. I think I only got 10 pages in. I don't even remember what I read. So we're gonna try this out. Hopefully this one goes a little bit better. But again, we're gonna see why this one is a lower rated book or how I feel. Maybe I agree, maybe I don't. Maybe this one is gonna be one of my favorites. We'll see. It's a great thing about reading is everyone's different and everyone's opinions are different. I'm still in a romance mood so I am excited about this one. I'm excited to read some Lauren Asher writing. Again, I love her writing so let's see how this one goes. guys it is the next morning i'm gonna lay in bed for a little and read before i start my day in my wonderful amazing show-stopping best sheets i've ever had in my entire life you guys know how much i talk about brooklyn in i seriously have been sleeping in these sheets i think it's been a few years now i get the best sleep ever it's like sleeping in a cloud i don't think i can switch to any other brand ever like i am loyal to brooklyn because they have the most 
comfy sheets duvet covers pillowcases like everything wake up every morning literally feeling like i'm in a cloud and i'm not just saying that like truly i talk about them all the time like i love their products so much and if you haven't heard of brooklinen they are a sheets company they create high quality home goods to elevate your home i feel like it's important to invest in some good sheets that are going to not only last long but also get softer with each wash but brooklinen did just come out with a ton of new colors which i think you guys should definitely check out if you're looking to switch up some of your bedding or if you want a new aesthetic for the new year of 2024 i want to switch up my sheet set i'm thinking for the springtime i'm feeling like different seasons i'm going to switch up my bedding and brooklinen like i said just came out with new colors i'm so excited to try them out i do have the white duvet cover and pillowcases and then also the moss little pillowcases on this one but if i were to break up my obsession with the white sheet set the new luxe sateen covers they have a cool pink one they have a blue mist one which is what i have my eye on i'm loving the light blue like so much they have a warm gray they have a willow color they have a cream color they have blue tide which is like a darker blue beach grass and then they also of course have the white set but these new colors are everything and more i have my eye on the pink and the blue ones i feel like those are going to be like such a cute color combination especially for the spring like the pastel kind of colors so like i said i have the luxe hardcore sheet bundle instead of buying individual items you can save 20 percent by purchasing the bundle the hardcore bundle includes the core sheet set extra pillowcases and duvet cover you can also choose from like 20 plus colors and patterns they have so many options and it's fun to mix and match to whatever your style is for your room and you can shop for your classic or luxe hardcore sheet bundles from the comfort of your own home you can go online and you can mix and match and put together whatever colors you want to see on your bed once you choose whichever bundle you want to try out you can see all the different colors and patterns so you can change up the colors of your pillowcase to be different from your sheets to be different from your duvet cover they don't have to all match or you can go for the all white vibe you can switch up the pillowcases like you can mix and match so many different colors and patterns it is so fun to do and whatever your style is of your room whatever aesthetic you're looking for for your room they definitely have a color for you especially with these new colors i am so excited for brooklyn is offering my viewers a special discount of 20 dollars off any order over a hundred dollars you guys can click the link below or use my code cyrus 20 highly highly recommend i cannot rave about brooklyn enough i'm obsessed with their bedding as you guys know i talk about them all the time highly recommend and if you're interested at all all that information is in the description i've been reading collided and i realized the dirty air series i think all of them are on kindle unlimited i know the first one is because i remember reading it like physical copy and kindle like i'm doing right now so this one collided is also kindle unlimited i downloaded it i've been such a kindle girly lately i don't know what it is about it i just can't stop downloading books on my kindle even though i have physical copies of it i'm about to be 30 percent of the way through which is page 124 on the kindle chapter 11 and this book goes really really fast i only have like four hours left of the book and like i said i'm 30 percent of the way through and i know i tried to describe the plot of this book by the back of it but now that i'm kind of into the book i can kind of explain what it's more about but again it's an f1 racing romance you don't know what f1 is it's just like a race car you know racing i don't watch f1 i know it's pretty popular and pretty big but you saw these two characters in the first one which reading this kind of brought back the memories of the first one because i vaguely remember it but i'm pretty sure this is the same timeline as the first one and you get glimpses of these two characters in throttled which is the first novel but reading this one i'm pretty sure it's the same timeline because i remember these scenes specifically with the main characters from the first one but now you're kind of seeing what this side of those scenes were with these two characters which is very interesting i do like that it's not kind of like too much of the same storyline following different characters and and the scenes you now see like what these characters were doing because when you're reading the first one you see them and kind of in like the background they're like talking but like now i know what they were talking about you know what i liked about this one is usually you kind of as you're reading romance novels i feel like you learn about the background of each character and why they're the way that they are as you continue the story but the way she started this in the prologue of the first two chapters she shows you how they meet and why liam is the way he is he's kind of like a bad boy doesn't want to be close to anyone but you know why he's the way he is as you start the book she's with her dad traveling for the summer with the f1 and everything she's still in school i think she's like 20 i don't know 23 but he's older i think he's like almost late 20s maybe that's what it is but when she was leaving school to go travel with her dad for this whole thing list called the fuck it list and it's just like a bucket list of things she wants to get done she wants to step out of her comfort zone and do different things there's lots of things on there there's just normal i guess kind of bucket list items but the majority of it is kind of like sexual items she wants to get done and liam sees the list and now it's kind of their secret that she has this list and he really wants to check off some boxes with her but she friend zones him and like 
no, we cannot do this. That's kind of where I'm at right now. I will say, like I said, the writing is very fast paced. I do enjoy Lauren Asher's writing, but I'm not loving Liam. I don't know if it's like what he's saying is just like too, like he's putting it on too heavy. You know what I mean? So I don't know if I'm loving him, but it definitely won't be my favorite romance I've read, but I'm definitely enjoying it as I'm reading it. It's definitely entertaining. It's definitely like insta lovey almost. So I think I'm gonna read on the Kindle. I don't know why I'm loving it right now, but I'm interested to see how we go from where we are right now as the two characters are into further in. I feel like this is gonna get spicy. I don't know why. I just feel like we're gonna take a turn somewhere. That's the vibes I'm getting from Liam right now. I don't know why. Anyway, I'm gonna go read some more and I will give further updates when I get further in. I think I wanna finish this today. I feel like I could. We'll see. ago I finished Collided by Lauren Asher and I'm still sitting on my reading. I think I ended up giving it three stars on Goodreads and I feel like that's where I'll probably sit with this one. It's not my favorite so far. I know it's only the second one but the first one I liked a little bit more but I still feel the same way that I felt about the first one with this one. I feel like it was definitely purely like a physical connection and like insta lovey and kind of the tension between the two characters but not in any emotional stance. Like it's definitely just like they have an attraction to each other and I felt that way with the first one as well and then eventually it's like this weird switch where like emotionally they're connected and like I don't feel it I don't connect to the characters and this one I didn't love Liam I thought I was gonna love him after reading Throttled I feel like his portrayal in Throttled I was excited about because he felt more like what's the word like playful character and one that's kind of like a banter character but the banter in here was kind of like cringy and like I said I feel like he put it on like way too thick like he was kind of saying things that was like like tone it down a little maybe it's not my favorite type of love interest I guess you could say I didn't really love him as a character and like the things he'd think or say about her is definitely like a lot so I definitely want to stick on a three star i wouldn't put it anything lower than a three star i feel like that's too low because i did enjoy the storyline and the bucket list they were doing and f1 scenes and all of that i enjoyed that and i enjoyed how this one i think i said this i'm not too sure but the timeline of it is the same as throttled so i like seeing maya is that her name? I think it's Maya and Noah from the first one. I don't know, but it was interesting because seeing those scenes that we've seen in Throttled, but seeing this side of it with these two characters was very interesting because it's the same timeline, but now we know what they were talking about and what they were like going through, I guess. But yeah, not my favorite. I do agree with the rating. I think it was like a 3.8 something on Goodreads, and I can totally see why it's a little bit lower rated. I feel like it's not the best romance. I feel like it's not one that I personally connected to, so I can definitely connect to it being more of like a three-star average mid type of rating, and I can totally see why it's on the lower rated side of the books. I might TBR for this month. It's just, yeah, it wasn't really my favorite. I do want to continue the series. Again, I like the F1. In the first book, I didn't love the F1 and the race car talk and all that, but I'm kind of enjoying it now. And I heard the last two are everyone's favorites in the series, so I definitely want to continue the series and kind of complete it. That's, I think, my stance on this one. And then I ended up starting Finale this morning. This one, like I said, is the last in the Carnival trilogy. I gave the first two, I think, an average of like 3.5 between the two of them. And they're not my favorite, not my favorite series, honestly. I am most interested 
interested in it because of Jax from Once Upon a Broken Heart. And I'm really interested to see how it plays out, how this series ends and where his story goes, knowing what he did and what he does and how he's introduced in Once Upon a Broken Heart. I'm really intrigued on that sense. And also I want to see how she finishes up and wraps up this trilogy because the first two are definitely like, when I was reading them, I felt like I was in like a fever dream because Carnival is basically this magical carnival type thing that this guy, Legend, puts on. I think it's like once a year. I'm not really sure how often it comes around, but you have to be invited to it. And like when you're there, not everything you see is real. So when I was reading it, I felt like I was literally in a fever dream. I didn't know what was real. I didn't know what was going on. I definitely like the second one better than the first, but I still am not like obsessed with it. I'm not like too connected to the characters in it, but it definitely is a super imaginative, creative story and one that you can kind of immerse yourself in and like get thrown in the world. And I do love that about it. I love that it's very different from other fantasies and again, really creative in the world that you're in. But again, feels like a fever dream. I got about 100 pages in this morning. I used my Audible credit and I got it on Audible. I listened to the second one and I really enjoyed listening to it. So I'm gonna do both. I'm gonna go back and forth and see how I like it and see how it goes. I'm interested to see if I like this one a lot better than the other two or if it's gonna be around the same average three-ish star rating. Because as we know, this one is highly rated and I think it's higher rated on Goodreads than the other two in the series, in the trilogy. So I'm interested to see if I am on the side of it being more highly rated than the other two or just in general and being the highest rated on my TBR for this month. I don't really know exactly what's going on. You get two point of views in this one, which is pretty interesting because both of the characters it's following, I feel like they're on very different paths right now of doing what they're doing. So I'm excited to see how it all kind of like intertwines and again, how this one ends. I have no idea where it's gonna go, but I will say Jax just came back in the picture and I am real excited about that, so. updates. I've read quite a bit and listened to quite a bit. I've been doing the back and forth. I really like listening to this book. I feel like it's not too difficult because sometimes when I'm trying to listen to audiobooks, I can't retain information too well, so I try not to listen to fantasy type of books because if I miss something, I'm, I get confused. But this one is not too difficult to understand in any way. And also, not just because it's the last one, I think even in listening to Carvel, I think it's a pretty simple, magical fantasy storyline. I feel like it's really good if you haven't read fantasy or you want to get into fantasy. Any of Stephanie Garber's books, Once Upon a Broken Heart, or this are really, really easy to get into and really fast paced and not difficult to like understand or retain any of the information which I think is really good again if you want to like get into fantasy or you want something kind of simple. I'm on page like 330 right now and I think there's about almost 500 pages so I have I actually don't know I would love to do that math in my head, but I can't. I don't know how much I have left, but I have a bit left. I do want to finish this today, and I'm not loving the one point of view that I didn't love from the first book, Carvel. I'm enjoying the other one a little bit more because it has Jax involved in it, and Legend is more involved in it, and I like that storyline more. I did think that Jax was going to have kind of like a bigger plot line and storyline. I kind of honestly think if he wasn't in this book, I don't think it really would make the biggest difference. I feel like his, at least right now, I feel like his character isn't really that significant in what's going on right now. I feel like he only pops into different scenes. I'm like, I can't really tell what the point of it is. I don't really know, but I'm not really enjoying his plot line. I thought that was gonna be my favorite part of this whole book was getting more of Jax, but it's not. Honestly, I like another character way more. And even though I say it's like magical and entertaining, a very creative plot line, storyline, like scenery type of thing, I feel like the plot is almost all over the place. I feel like we have like one scene going on and then it's kind of choppy, like the pacing's kind of choppy going into another scene. It's not just like flowing into each scene. I feel like we're like, we're somewhere and then something happens and then we're somewhere else and something happens and it's not like all flowing really well. I do like how the plot hasn't just stuck with Carnival, which I feel like the first two kind of focus more on Carnival and the carnival and the magicalness of it, but this plot is more the magical system of the fates and the cards and all of that, which I think is a lot more interesting. Or not a lot more interesting, but I think it's more interesting for this one that it's not just another Carnival going on and it's a different kind of plot going on. Also, as I'm listening and reading, I feel like I would 100% watch this if it was a movie or a show. I think this would be such a good movie or show, like visually, I think it would be like incredible. Like I want at least one of her series to become an adaptation. I think it would be so cool to see and I feel like it's such like a magical type of 
fantasy, like fairy tale almost, that I feel like it would be so perfect to watch. I do think though reading these almost back to back, not back to back, all three of these, but I feel like reading them closer together would make more sense because I don't even remember what happened in Legendary. Carvel like a little bit, but Legendary, when I listened to it, I didn't like, I don't know. I don't really remember everything that happened in that book. <laughs> I didn't even think I read it that long ago, but reading this, I'm just like, some stuff isn't really adding up. And then she'll kind of describe something that happened in Legendary. I was like, oh. No, that kind of makes sense, but I don't really remember too much. So I feel like reading them closer together would probably be better. Or just reading probably the summary of the last book before going into this one, if you forget. But yeah, I'm gonna read some more today. Hopefully finish. Really excited to see what goes on. Actually, now that I'm saying that, I think I know how it ends. Because I read Once Upon a Broken Heart and that kind of spoils what happens with the main characters in this book. And I completely forgot that I read that in Once Upon a Broken Heart and actually just remembered that I think I know what happens. Did I just spoil the ending for myself because I read that series first? I feel like maybe not. I mean, I'm still interested to know how we get there, so I don't know. We'll see. I'm gonna go read some more though and listen to some more. We will see how it goes. We'll see how it ends. So far right now, it's kind of giving the same as the other two. Like, I'm not obsessed with it. I do like it a little bit more just because the plot's a little different, but still not my favorite, but we'll see. take back what I said about Jax maybe 10 minutes ago. I said that maybe his character's not as important to this one. Like, I don't really see the point of what's going on with him. Literally, the next chapter I read completely just, like, slashed a line through what I said. I completely ignore that because he is important to the story. It just took a while to get here, so I was a little confused on what his character was really gonna do for the plot of this one. And you know, it makes sense now. So I take back what I said about Jax not really having an important role. It's pretty important, but I just didn't really, it didn't really click in my head until I just read it. And you know, I should have known this again because I read Once Upon a Broken Heart and some of this is in there. It went right over my head. So I take it back though. He's definitely important to the story. finished finale and I don't know I really don't even know and I feel like this is really telling to I guess this video that I'm doing is like the highest rated on my TBR and that a lot of people rate highly may not be one that I rate highly or say I rated this five stars and other people think it's like a three or two star or even the lowest rated one like that's a three star to me but could be a five star or one star to other people like ratings are so subjective and that's why I love to do this and see if this is highly rated how I feel about it like do I agree or not and that's what I love about reading so much everyone just has such different opinions on the same words on paper and it's just so interesting to see. I don't know what I'm gonna rate this because I just finished it. I feel like I have to sit on it a little bit. So when I'm editing, I'll put my rating up here. I don't think it's gonna be four or above. Like I don't even think it would hit a four star. I feel like this whole trilogy just fell a little bit flat for me and not in like the magical sense of it and her writing style. I feel like it's very enchanting and fairy tale and easy to read and it's a fast paced series and you can fall into the world of Carnival. I feel like with all of the bigger scenes happening, I feel like there's not any like true build up to them if that makes sense any sense like big scenes are happening and like high stakes things are happening but they just happen like there's no like build up to it no like not a slow burn into it but like no background into it i feel like it just like crazy things just start happening you know like i said before it's like a little bit choppy and i feel like even with that build up if there was more into like the backstory and the history and more into again the build up of everything i feel like i would love it a lot more i would connect to it a little bit more i feel like it was a little bit surface level and everything like she kind of just told us all of this stuff without like i don't know how to explain that one like she's telling us about the fate and about Carvel and about all this stuff, but I feel like I wasn't really in it. Do you know what I mean? I don't really know how to explain this one, but I overall liked it. I think it was a decent book. It like for finishing up the Carvel trilogy, I think I expected different things to go on, but it was still a good book. And again, I liked the magicalness of it and the creativity of the whole entire world. I think Stephanie Garber does an incredible job of that and making it feel just so like fairy tale magical, but I didn't connect with the main characters, which was a little disappointing. And I feel like they're just like kind of running around describing different places and different things without like the detail, you know, like the, the history of it and like getting into it really so yeah 
not my favorite and I'm a little disappointed that it wasn't because I was really hoping we could finish off the series strong for me but I still would recommend it. I still think it's a great series to start out fantasy in or if you just want a magical world to get into and you want to read this trilogy I 100% would recommend it. Just personally it's not my favorite trilogy I've ever read and I still think it's so interesting how this was the highest rated on my TBR for this month but probably isn't my favorite book that I've read for my TBR this month and the ones that I liked more I think had a little bit of lower ratings than this. I don't know but it's very interesting again. Reading is so subjective. We all have different opinions and I think it is just so fun to see and compare to different opinions and ratings and stuff. That is all for today's video. Those are the two books. Or actually, I did DNF one. I can't believe we had our first DNF of the year, but those are the books we'll be reading for this video. I definitely want to try this one day with all of the physical books on my TBR and see the highest rated on there and the lowest rated on there. Like, I'm very intrigued to see, one, what those books are, and two, my opinions on them. So if you guys enjoyed this and you want to see that video, let me know. Yeah, I'm also happy that we're getting some books off my TBR. I'm almost on my way of finishing all the books that were on my January TBR, which is, I don't think I've ever done before, putting books on my monthly TBRs and actually finishing them. So things are looking up this month, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you've read these books, your opinions on them, your ratings, how you feel compared to the average ratings that it has on Goodreads, and all your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you hopefully in the next one. Bye!